Hey, everybody, Pastor Jason and Pastor Andy here with you on Life Change yes, Daily. Yes, hallelujah. We are so excited that you have joined us here this morning. Glory. We bless you in the name of the yes. Lord, and we believe it's going to be a great day. Yes. So, hey, we we have been, matter of fact, we, we're still a little tossed up. I'm telling you, you, I know you think I ain't, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> we're still a little tossed up. Oh. We have a, we have a thing oh. that we do every once in a while for the people uh, who take care of, of editing these uh, devotions and putting them together uh, very frequently, frequently we will turn the camera on and we will spout moments and moments of just pure nonsense at those people. And uh, we did, we did uh, let them know repeatedly how stirred up we were yeah. and how tossed up yeah. we were. So we're letting you know today and I hope and I pray that by the close of this, you'll be just as messed up as I we are today. Right <laughs> so Pastor Andy, we have been really uh, this whole this whole ministry has been on what I would refer to as an advanced war footing mm -hmm. for the last several months, really probably in the lead up to Trail to Hell. I mean, obviously, we're in a constant warfare, yes. but in the lead up to Trail to Hell, we, we entered into mm -hmm. a, a realm of spiritual warfare uh, that, that was, was very advanced. Mm -hmm. And really, up until that time, uh, from that time to this time, it's it's like we have not pulled the foot off the gas no. of the warfare. No. And it's because because obviously the war is being brought to us. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord's allowing us to win. Yes. Uh, because as as my dear friend, Andy Hosford says very frequently, we're in a fixed fight. Uh, yes. sir. And so uh, we're, we're being allowed to win. But but I, I was thinking about this because a couple of Sundays ago, our pastor preached a powerful mm. word on spiritual warfare. Absolutely. I mean, powerful, maybe Absolutely. one of the most powerful words that yes. you have ever heard on spiritual yes. warfare. I invite you to go back and check it out yeah. on the Abundant Life Revival Network YouTube channel or on Facebook or wherever uh, it is that you can look them up. It was so, it was so powerful, great. so great, so powerful. But what it did is it heightened our understanding of two things. One is we are in a war. Yes. And number two, there are so many Christians who do not realize we are in a war. Come on, come on. And if we know we're in a war, sometimes we don't know how to fight the war. Yes. So as you and I were preparing for this, you know, uh, uh, for me, it's been a, uh, a a very overt thing mm -hmm. as far as is having this concept of spiritual warfare. A lot of my devotional time has been spent towards that. My personal devotional time has been spent towards towards uh, knowing more about that, engaging more in that. And so as we were preparing for this, I said, man, I'm, all I'm feeling right now is spiritual warfare. Yeah. And so we've come into this thing. We have a few scriptures yeah. and a couple of thoughts, but we're like, and the Holy uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're like our guest speaker was uh, the other night on Wednesday yes, night. Yes. Um, we got a couple scriptures. We have the Holy Ghost. Let's see where this thing Let's takes us. So. <laughs> and thank the Lord. He thank wrote it out. I was blessed. Yes, indeed. Woo. Bless the Lord for it. So I want to share this with you uh, today. I want to take a couple of anchor scriptures. These are going to be our scriptures that we're going to anchor with uh, through the entire week, uh, these first few scriptures. The first one is found in 1 Timothy chapter 1, and I want to read verse 18. Uh, and so uh, begin reading verse 18. And Paul is speaking to his son in the faith, Timothy, who, by the way, struggled with tremendous fear, yeah. tremendous anxiety. This is what he says, this command I commit to you, my son, Timothy, according to the prophecies that were previously given to you, that by them, by the prophecies, yes, yes. you may fight a good fight, mm -hmm. keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. I want to yeah. push uh, past that, but we did see. Uh, a phrase in there that was very powerful, mm -hmm. fight a good fight. Right. I want to scoot forward and I want to go to first Timothy chapter six. And I want to begin reading in verse 11 there, okay. but you, O man of God, escape these things and follow after righteousness, yeah. godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Yes. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Mm -hmm. Now let's scoop mm -hmm. to uh, the second epistle uh, to Timothy. Second Timothy 
And I want to begin reading in chapter two, verse one. Mm -hmm. Paul says, so you, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Share the things that you have learned from me in the presence of many witnesses with faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Endure hard times as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No soldier on active duty entangles himself with civilian affairs that he may please the enlisting officer. Mm-hmm. Pastor Andy, we are in a fight. Yes, no doubt. We are in a fight. These are just a few mm-hmm. scriptures among among many that we yes. could give, probably hundreds if yes. we did the research yeah. that show us that we are in the midst of a fight. We, one of the things our pastor said uh, to us in that message is he said, the day you signed on to be a Christian, yes. you enlisted Absolutely. in a war. Absolutely. You enlisted in a war. Now, if I'm going to be in a war, Mm -hmm. the most important thing I think I need to know is who am I fighting against? Yes. Yes, no doubt. Because if I'm fighting the wrong fight, Mm -hmm. if I'm fighting the wrong adversary, Mm -hmm. then my adversary who is indeed against me, my enemy who is indeed against me, that enemy can take me out anytime he wants to because my attention is diverted That's right. and away from the other fight. That's right. So I think it's important for us to take, take this first part of spiritual warfare and understand who our enemy is. Mm. Now, I understand for, for a lot of y'all <clears throat> that you're looking and you're saying, come on, Pastor Jason, we all know who our enemy is. Do we? Mm. Do we? Because I've been in this thing all my little life. <laughs> Oh, your little old life, I think. (laughs) I've been been in this thing all my little life. I have been in church literally my entire life. Mm -hmm. I I have been in church my entire life. And I have watched as the people of God, spirit-filled people of God. Because understand this, I've been in Pentecostal church my whole life. Come on. I've watched as spirit-filled people of God have got caught up in the wrong fight. Yes. And they have suffered, as Paul said to his son Timothy, shipwreck. Yes. They have been in the wrong fight. So here's what we have to understand. We have to understand who our adversary is. Mm -hmm. So to understand that, I think the first thing we need to do is we need to go to a place where one of the apostles identifies Mm -hmm. our adversary. That's good. So let's push to this. I want to go to 1 Peter uh, chapter 5. 1 Peter 5. And I actually want to begin reading in verse um, five. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm there. Likewise, you younger ones, submit yourselves to the elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and clothe yourselves with humility because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. Be sober and watchful. Your translation probably says vigilant. Vigilant. Mm -hmm. Be sober and vigilant because your adversary, Uh the devil, walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him firmly in the faith, knowing that your same afflictions are experienced by your brotherhood throughout Mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. So who is our adversary? He is the devil. That's right. That's right. It's very important to understand that our adversary is the devil. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that all of you are looking and you're saying, oh, Pastor Jason, this is so elementary. Before you even read that scripture, I knew who my adversary Mm -hmm. was. If that's the case, then why are we fighting flesh and blood? Come on. Come on. Because so often, Pastor Andy, we get caught up in the fight with flesh and blood. Absolutely. I have watched, I have watched, I'm going to reach into my pocket and pull out my phone. I have watched and I have watched as as Christian men and women have gotten on this thing right here. Oh, come on, man. And that the war that was going on wasn't a war that was happening in the heavenlies. Mm -hmm. It was a war that was happening with flesh and blood right (laughs) here. No doubt, no doubt. So, because what we've gotten caught up in is we've gotten caught up in in the uh, whole idea that our war is against the Republicans. Come on. 
Our war is against the Democrats. Mm -hmm. Our war is against the, the people who don't believe exactly like we do. Our war is against the, the homosexuals and the lesbians. Our war is against the uh, Planned Parenthood. Our war is against this. Our war is against that. And then we keep breaking it down. So our war is against that lady who talks wow. about me and gossips about me Come behind on. my back. My war is over here with my with my husband who, uh, who doesn't do this thing right or doesn't do that thing right. Yeah. We have gotten so caught up in fighting the wrong fight that the enemy has had free reign Absolutely. to come in and attack us Absolutely. whenever, wherever, and however he chooses. Yes, yes, yes. So not by not understanding, by not understanding who we're fighting, mm -hmm. when we go to fight, we open ourselves up to lose. Yes. That's exactly right. And and so that's that's what's being exposed right here, right now. Mm -hmm. That the very second you thought you was going to battle mm -hmm. and that you was doing it the right way, yeah. you stepped in the flesh yes. and immediately Woo! you exposed yourself yes. for him to come in. Yes. Until then, you was truth be known, mm -hmm. probably positioned. Mm-hmm. In a good position, right? Because in a because in a <laughs> war of flesh, the enemy wins every time. Every time. As a matter of fact, the the Bible says it like this. Because <clears throat> I want I want to kind of think about it in these terms that are going to be gross for just about that long. Okay. You know he's good for. It. Yeah, they're going to be gross for just about that long. So uh, just kind of brace yourself, get yourself a deep breath and a drink of water. You ever watch the National Geographic Channel? Mm -hmm. And they're showing the lion, mm -hmm. and the lion is stalking, and he's and he or she is is uh, is is looking at the prey, and then all of a sudden yeah. they they get the prey, and once the prey is on the ground, what happens is is that the lion comes in and devours the totality, mm -hmm. and gorges himself on the totality of the flesh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the prey. That's right. When I am. When I am fighting in the flesh, yes. I am exposing myself to the devourer. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there was a, a very interesting thing that, the, that, that Paul gives us in the book of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. In that in order to protect, uh, in, in military, in order to protect our very vulnerable flesh, mm -hmm. we put on armor. Yes. Yes. That's right. And so as Paul is helping us understand what's going on here, I love this. I'm not, I'm not going to get into the whole armor today because that's another study for another time. Mm -hmm. But before he even begins to talk about the armor, he gets into Ephesians 6. And this is what he says in verse 10. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil for our fight mm -hmm. is not against flesh and blood, Come on. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. So if we know who our adversary is not, That's we right. also have the opportunity to know who our adversary is. That's if right. I'm not fighting on a fleshly level, Pastor mm -hmm. Andy, mm -hmm. I'm fighting then, I'm permitting myself to fight on the superior level, yeah. the area, the level where I have dominion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is in the spiritual realm. That's right. The enemy always has dominion in the fleshly realm. Absolutely. He always has dominion in the fleshly mm -hmm. realm. Mm -hmm. But in the spiritual realm, I have dominion. Mm -hmm. In the spiritual realm, I have power because God is spirit. Yes. So if I'm operating in a spiritual realm, if I'm operating in that in that area and I'm understanding my fight is not with flesh and blood, mm -hmm. my fight is not Donald Trump, my fight mm -hmm. is not Barack Obama, my mm -hmm. fight is not Planned Parenthood, my fight mm -hmm. is not is not this, my fight is not that. My fight, mm -hmm. my fight is in the spirit that is driving greed. In the spirit that is driving lust, in the spirit that is driving immorality, in the spirit that is driving hate, the spirit mm -hmm. that is driving racism, the spirit that is driving division and dissension, the spirit that is driving all of these things, that is my yes. fight. Yes. And if I lower myself to fight on a fleshly level, mm -hmm. then I'm going to lose that fight every single every, time. Every time. Every time. 
you know, it's one of them. So before me and me and uh, me and another pastor were speaking and and we was talking about someone that he was ministering to. And I said, I said, if they do not acknowledge it to be sin and sin that is influenced by a demon, mm -hmm. then they'll never be set free. That's right. That's because right. Because <clears throat> unless of that is so entwined in their identity mm -hmm. that they think it's who they are. Yes. Yes. So so what we do a lot of the times, mm -hmm. Pastor, <clears throat> excuse me, is we actually bring the old man mm -hmm. and the new man mm -hmm. and we entwine it together. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Not because Jesus said do it. Right. <laughs> we entwine it right. together. Yeah. Because first of all, it's what we're familiar with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's what we don't want to get rid of. It's true. Okay. So when the Bible begins to correct a thing and mm -hmm. said, no, you got to forgive. Mm -hmm. We say, I don't want to forgive. I yes. want to hate. Yes. I, I want to yes. hate that person. Right. You don't understand. That's right. I actually want to hate them. Yes. I have survived and lived off of this mm -hmm. hate towards them. Indeed. And the Bible says, no, you got, you have to forgive. Mm -hmm. Well, rather than forgive, we want to entwine the, the justification of hate. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is if we would acknowledge mm -hmm. that the influence of the hate mm -hmm. comes from the spirit of murder. Yes. Yes. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes. All of a sudden we would turn around and say, hold on a second. I don't want to be influenced by, by a spirit that is destroying my life. Right. I'm, I'm a child of the most high God. Mm -hmm. And immediately when you acknowledge that, that it's sin to hate, mm -hmm. it is a sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's actually mm -hmm. a sin mm -hmm. to hate people. Mm -hmm. And you acknowledge that this influence is not coming from God yes. to hate people. Yes. You understand what yes. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you acknowledge this, now you have identified your enemy. Yeah. And your enemy is not the person, mm -hmm. and your enemy is not God who's trying to correct the issue. Yeah, yeah. Your enemy is the spirit mm -hmm. and the sin, mm -hmm. and we can handle both of those. Yes, yes. Really quick, fast, and in a hurry. I agree. All we have to do is repent. Mm-hmm. Repent, turn from your wicked ways, mm -hmm. which is resisting. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? That's exactly I'm going to repent, and then I'm going to turn from my wicked ways. When I do that, mm -hmm. when it shows back up, I resist it, and it flees from me. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But because of what God has done in me. Mm -hmm. And then because you have identified the mm -hmm. enemy. Yes. Who is the enemy? Yes. Who's the enemy right here? Mm -hmm. Well, if you search it out, mm -hmm. you'll find out, just like Pastor has talked before, most of the time the enemy is in me. Mm -hmm. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. The enemy ain't all these other people outside mm -hmm. of here. Yes. Most of the time what I have found out, and, and I, you, you've heard me say this quite a few times, and I tell people this. Mm -hmm. This is what I've been taught. The enemy hits you mm -hmm. where you're the weakest, when, when you're, you're the, the weakest. weakest. Yep. So don't you be fooled and think that the enemy has any conscience. Yes. Nor that he has any honor. Mm -hmm. He has neither one of those two. You're sitting around thinking, <clears throat> well, he'll come and we'll fight toe-to-toe -to -toe where I'm strongest. Mm -hmm. You're dead wrong. Dead wrong. Let me tell you, yep. he's going to hit you where you're the weakest, mm -hmm. when you're the weakest. And, and where you're unprotected. Absolutely, and he's and, gonna he's gonna devote everything to it. And he, and here's the thing. This was I think something that's that's really interesting uh, mm -hmm. going on with that thought. I didn't intend to get into mm -hmm. this today, but I feel mm -hmm. like I feel like with what you're saying, it's opened this up. Yes, I feel like it's important for us to put this out there for the next couple of minutes that we have, as we read what Scripture is saying to us here mm -hmm. about fighting, about yes. the fight, about yes. the warfare that we're yes. in. I want you to see what God identifies. Mm. Come on. What God identifies in the adversarial department. So mm -hmm. I'm going to scoop back. I'm going to go backwards now mm -hmm. from what I did before. I'm going to start in 1 Peter 5. So, likewise, you younger ones, submit yourselves to the elders. Come on. Come on. So, if we turn that part, it's a lack of submission. 
So my enemy is my inability to submit. There it is. There's one. Okay. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and clothe yourselves in hum with humility because God resists the proud. He is opposed yes. to the proud. As a matter of fact, one scripture, yes. I believe, uh, I think the King James Version says mm -hmm. God opposes mm -hmm. the proud, yeah. yes. but he gives grace to the humble. So if God is opposed to you, then pride is the enemy of God. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So a lack of submission mm -hmm. and pride. Yeah. That's two adversaries that we have identified, yes. two enemies right. we've identified. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that may exalt you in due time. Cast all your care upon him. Huh. Look at that. So the cares of life. Found another enemy. Are my enemy. Yeah. So here's what we've identified. A lack of submission, pride, mm -hmm. and cares of life. Yes. All of these enemies. Yes. Okay. Be sober and watchful because your adversary, the devil, walks around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him firmly. In the faith. Come on. So a lack of faith is an enemy. Is an enemy. Is an so enemy. lack of submission. Mm. Pride. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Uh, let's see. Let me go back. Lack of submission. Pride. Uh, cares of life. And a lack of faith. Yes. All enemies. Every one of them. All enemies. Enemy. That's right. So yeah. here we go. Here we go. Let's shoot back. Second Timothy. Hallelujah. Chapter 2. So you, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. Share the things that you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses with faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Endure hard times as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No, no soldier on active duty entangles himself with civilian affairs. Come on. So <laughs> civilian affairs or the cares of life, basically. Of life. Just tangled you up. There again. it is again. By the yes. way, out of, out of the mouth of two different men. Come on. The Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul. Yes. Uh, that he may please the enlisting officer. Let's shoot back now. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to 1 Timothy 6. But you, O man of God, escape these things. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to identify enemies... Mm -hmm. When he says, follow after these things, then what we need to do is we need to be opposed to unrighteousness, ungodliness, yes. lack of faith, lack of love, yes. lack of patience, and a lack of gentleness. Yes. 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 These are our adversaries. Those things are our adversaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is, let's, uh, let's scoot back now. 1 Timothy 1, Come on. verse 18, this command I commit to you, my son Timothy, <laughs> according to the prophecies that were previously given to you that by them you may fight a good fight, keeping faith. Come on. Come on. That's it. There's the lack of faith again. Good. And a good conscience. <laughs> that is righteousness. Yes, yes. Which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in yes. regard to their faith. Yes. yes. So what we've identified, Pastor Andy, is that all of the enemies that we have identified in just our scripture readings from yes. today. yes. They all exist here That's right. and here. That's right. Therefore, Not here. Therefore, when you go out <laughs> and you start attacking, yes. you start fighting in a different way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every, and it's hard, it's hard for certain people to understand. Yes. But in boxing, there's times, if you watch two people box, mm -hmm. there's times you're thinking one should be hitting the other one. Mm-hmm. But really, the reason he's not swinging is because he knows it's a setup. Mm -hmm. That when he swings across this way, it opens him up to be hit. Yes, yes. And he's looking at it saying, I could swing. Mm -hmm. And he's allowing me to do this. Why? Because mm -hmm. it opened me up for a knockout blow. Yes. It's called combinations. Yes. <laughs> and so many times, we are focused. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is throwing up setups. Mm -hmm. So such and such said such and such. Mm -hmm. Such and such did such. Don't forget five years ago. True. Don't forget. Here's this combination. Boom, mm -hmm. boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And you turn around and say, I'm about to swing and hit him. And when you do, guess what it did? It opened you up mm -hmm. for a knockout a blow. A knockout blow. And I'm telling you, Pastor Andy, I can, I can testify I'm to being you. in the fight, being being confident in my own abilities yes, yes. and hitting the deck. 
I'm telling you. I'm telling in 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 war, mm -hmm. many people don't know this. But but if you watch anything about generals, sometimes they know in certain battles mm -hmm. they're gonna lose men. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's called attrition. Yes. So I'm setting up the lose over here. So you have a flank, what's called a flank. Mm -hmm. When you move your men, now mm -hmm. you're vulnerable here, and that's where I'm really going to focus mm -hmm. my attack at. Yeah. And and that's what happens. I think that's where we are. I think <clears throat> that's where we need to start tomorrow. Yes. Because we are out of time. Bless the Lord. So I'd love for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love for you to do this for me, for uh, us today. Yeah. Would you pray mm -hmm. that the people of God would get a revelation mm -hmm. of the enemy? inside yeah. of us and yeah. that we would resist him in the faith. Yeah. Can yeah. you do that yeah. for us? Yeah. Father God, right oh, now, da, 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 Lord da, 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 God, we have yes. prayed, Lord God, that yes. your people's eyes would be yes. open, that their yes. ears would be open, their hearts so, would receive da, 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 your word, oh God. Da, 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 I thank you for da, 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 your word. And I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that yes, every person God. that hears this, Lord yes, God, God. It, rather it's in the, in the future, so, whatever it is, oh God, da, 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 that Lord God, you begin to expose, Lord God, the enemy inside of them, Lord God, that you begin to expose how the enemy has been using tactics against their lives, Destroying their lives, oh God. Destroying marriages, destroying blessings, destroying the things that you have in store, oh God. Ruining futures, ruining plans, oh God. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, through this. Through this word, oh God, yes, may Lord. it reveal his yes, plans, God. oh God. Yes, and may God. the pit that he has dug for them to fall in, may he fall in himself, And Father God, as you do this, I ask, Lord God, that you begin to draw your people closer to you. Draw them into the prayer closet and teach them your words. Teach them your word. I ask in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for it. Thank you, God. Amen, amen. Well, we bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us on Life Change Daily today. Hallelujah. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Hey, everybody. Pastor Jason here. We want to thank you for joining us for today's devotion. Remember to share it across your social media platforms. If you live in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas and you are looking for a great church where the power and the presence of God are on display, we would love to have you visit us at our Revival Center campus in Locust Grove, Georgia, or our Forsyth campus in Forsyth, Georgia. You can find information about these locations at our website, AbundantLifeChurch.com. Remember, it's time to stretch yourself. It's time to dream bigger. It's time to believe for the impossible. It's time to expand.